The U.S. Marines. They're the best amphibious troops in the world. They storm the beach on a cushion of air. Arrive on the battlefield out of thin air. And hit a bullseye a mile away. They're unrivaled, unyielding, and unstoppable. Today's United States Marine Corps is designed for decisive action. From land, sea, or air, they hit the enemy hard, anywhere in the world, on short notice. To fulfill their missions, they field some of the deadliest and most specialized machines of war. For centuries, navies have had small marine forces for protecting their ships and carrying out raids against enemy positions on the shore. The importance of a dedicated Marine Corps to the United States reached a new height in World War II. Highly trained troops, supported by specialized equipment, were needed to wrest control of many Pacific islands from Japanese defenders. Battles like Tarawa and Iwo Jima became the stuff of legend. They reinforced the Marine Corps' importance to America's armed forces. The equipment used to project Marine power ashore has developed significantly since World War II. New types of specialized Navy amphibious assault ships provide a sophisticated mix of naval and air support. Helicopters are especially critical to battlefield mobility. The operations of World War II were restricted to certain types of surface assault craft uh, embarked from a, a vessel. Now we have the, that capability in addition uh, to the uh, air assault, heliborne assault uh, capability, which uh, greatly enhances our strike profile and allows us to uh, a wider variety of missions in support of the amphibious landing ashore. Despite its sophisticated hardware, the heart of the Marine Corps is its superb light infantry. The weaponry of the Marines is designed for portability. A rifleman is equipped with the M16 assault rifle, which can be fitted with a 40 millimeter grenade launcher. Fire support for the rifle squad and platoon is provided by the M249 squad automatic weapon and the M60 E3 light machine gun. These can be supplemented by the Mark 19 40 mm automatic grenade launcher, which can be mounted on a Humvee. Marine rifle companies also use lightweight 60 mm mortars. For defense against enemy aircraft and helicopters, the Marines use the Stinger missile. The Stinger is shoulder mounted and employs an identification friend or foe or IFF system to prevent accidentally downing friendly aircraft. Its fire and forget infrared seeker has proven to be highly effective even against sophisticated jet attack aircraft. 
Tanks are a constant danger to infantry troops, and the Marines use the Dragon guided anti-tank missile. And the vehicle mounted tow missile launcher to destroy enemy tanks. U.S. Marine tank units depend on the M1 Abrams. One of the world's most powerful tanks, the M1 is armed with a 120 millimeter gun. Its 1500 horsepower gas turbine engine muscles it through rough terrain. At ranges exceeding 1800 yards, it achieves pinpoint accuracy thanks to its advanced fire control system. For scouting operations, the Marines use the nimble LAV-25. Variants of this armored wheeled vehicle serve in command and control, anti-tank and recovery capacities. The LAV is typical of the Marines' focus on strategic mobility. It is light enough to be rapidly deployed from the air, slung under the belly of a CH-53E helicopter. Beyond their equipment and technology, what distinguishes the Marines is their training and organization. Uh, Marines pride themselves in discipline and operational readiness. We train probably harder than anybody else. Also, uh, the Marine Corps uh, has an air side, we have a, su a support side, and we have a, a ground side. So we have everything all combined in one. We don't have to request support from any of the other branches of the service except for the Navy to get us there. And once we're there, we're able to conduct operations for 30 days ashore without resupply. So we're self-contained. And uh, when you put Marines ashore, you know that they're able to do the job until further forces can come on and uh, reinforce them. The one armored vehicle unique to the Marine Corps is the Amphibious Assault Vehicle, or Amtrak. Amtraks were developed in the late 1930s. Their unique mobility in both water and on land made them invaluable in the amphibious assaults during the Central Pacific battles of World War II. The first Amtraks, like the LVT-1, used at the Battle of Tarawa, had no overhead armor. Post-war designs like the LVT-3C used in Korea and the later LVT-P-5 deployed in Vietnam had more powerful engines and better armor protection.